Hey everybody, welcome to today's stream. Should be a fun one. We're gonna be casting some crystals in a tube in, uh, you, know, you know, mold. Let me pull that out of the oven real quick. So one of the P-Town subbies, we're gonna cast some blanks and we're gonna turn some of these crystal blanks. I, I already pre-made some and I'm curious to see how these turn. I'm expecting them to be pretty tough. Uh, so I got one kind of ready. Uh, so it should be pretty fun. We're gonna kind of quickly do the, the casting and, and I just want to kind of mention the way that I cast the, the, the ones that we're going to turn, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Um, I filled the, you know, filled the whole mold around the tube uh, with these crystals. And these, these crystals were sent in by Philip Danner. Um, we had some Moonstone, some Labradorite, and some Aura Quartz. So I just kind of filled the mold around the tube with these rocks, basically, or crystals. Um, so I wouldn't really recommend doing this. The reason I did that is because I want to see how these things turn. Um, we're going to get a really good example of, of how these rocks, <laughs> you know, turn um, and how tough they are. So I'm, I'm not messing with, I, I don't really use high-speed steel anymore anyway, but um, we're definitely going to be using carbide for this because I think high-speed steel, it would just murder those, uh, murder those edges. So uh, what, I, what we're going to do for the, the actual casting part is I'm going to kind of show you how I would recommend doing this. And it's gonna be simple. We're just gonna glue on the little crystals onto the tube. I think that's a way better way to go uh, for two reasons. One, you're not gonna have, you know, like a really, really horrible blank to turn, um, but you may cut into it. And that's why I wanted to do this test to see, you know, how, how bad is this? You know, what, what can you expect? Um, <clears throat> but if you just, uh, you know, glue the little pieces on, hopefully most of them you will miss. You'll avoid, <coughs> excuse me, cutting into them. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use a little bit of UV resin, glue on some things onto the tubes and then cast them. Uh, we might have to kind of flip flop back and forth between casting and turning because I think what I'm gonna do is probably let those things kind of bake in the little uh, nail UV light thing um, while, while the glue's drying and then we may come back after turning and, and cast those. We'll have to kind of see how I feel. I, it's always better, I think, to, to let the UV resin fully cure, put them out in the sun or do something, put it under a UV light for a good like 10 minutes at least, maybe 15. I, I like to just leave it there for about 15. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today. It should be kind of fun. I haven't actually turned anything. Man, I haven't, I haven't actually used my lathe for like, I don't know, over a month probably almost. So I'm looking forward to it. It should be pretty fun. Um, so what I did was I just used the Sierra tubes. So that's, I like to do like the single blanks, especially on things that have a really high chance if I'm just experimenting and I got a really high chance of the thing just not working. Um, I'd rather cast two, uh, either, either, you know, if we're using the, the two bin blanks, you get two blanks so that if you have to go, you know, start out, start over, basically you have another one. Um, or if I'm just using a full pen blank, that way you get two blanks out of that one pen blank. So I like to experiment with single blank, uh, pen kits basically for, you know, for the purpose of doing this in case there is a problem that I run into and I have to say, oh, we need to do another one. Uh, so anyway, I hope everybody's doing good today. Should be a fun one today. Uh, we don't have to wait for polls or any other things so we can kind of get right into it. I'm gonna stop real quick. I saw that Dominic was here way early. So was Doug. And Mike McEwen's here, Martian. Let's see, who else? Amy's here, nice. And Phillips here, nice. Um, one, let's see, well, I was gonna ask Phillips something. Uh, what was I gonna ask Philip about the crystals? Let me think about that. I had a question, I think. Uh oh, you got timers going off. Um, so when I think of it, I will ask. Let's see here. <laughs> Jim was saying, are we going new age? Actually, these crystals are really cool. Um, so I did actually one other thing that I wanted to mention about these. Let me let me switch to the overhead cam. So I did two different types of tubes. I did a silver tube and a black tube. And I, I got to be honest, I'm pretty sure that having a black dark background is probably the way you would want to go with these things. But, you know, so we're going to turn the black one. Um, but it is shining on on the silver one too you can kind of see them but I, I do think that it's kind of like the the interference powders where having a dark background is kind of a better way to go wanted to kind of mention that real quick we're gonna we're gonna use black tubes i'm gonna make a junior kit um, for the one that we we actually uh cast today so let's see who else is here christina's here 
Peace. Craftsman's Imagination. Welcome. Gene's here. Tom's here. Mike. Ghost Wolf. Lots of people. Frank's here. Awesome. Ah, and Kevin Carpenter's here too. Welcome. Yeah, I'm excited to see how these turn too. I, <laughs> I think it's going to be... Yeah, these shirts are awesome. You can get them at um, Turner's Warehouse. They, and I think they're coming out with new colors too. So I like this color. It's, it's, uh, it may not be coming up on that. It's, it's pretty like Kelly green um, in, in person. That's what it looks like to me. So pretty good shirts. Uh, Turner's Warehouse has really good stuff. I like their hats, their shirts, all like uh, everything. Sometimes you get shirts and they're like kind of flimsy and, and they don't really fit right. Um, usually all of Turner's Warehouse's stuff and even their hats. Hats can be a really tough one, and they fit me really well. Peapod's here. How's it going? The Steve McDonald's here. Sweet. So many people. And Yak, too. What's up? So anyway, uh, one other little quick announcement before we start moving on. Um, so last week, we made the graffiti blanks. And let's see here. So I'm going to actually switch to the overhead again, and I'll show you the results. Um, I got these things posted, listed on my website really digging these these uh like kind of i'm calling them kind of pastel colors um really good color combination in there good we got pretty good swirls uh, and then we tried doing rainbow <laughs> and uh, i'm not super thrilled with them they're not bad but not exactly what i was really going for um, and i actually blew another batch i <laughs> poured another batch of five and kind of blew that one too um, after the, the stream. And then I went back and tried it one more time. <laughs> and so I like th this batch and I ended up the way that I did this. One thing that I did was I was having difficulty, you know, cause you got seven colors, right? And you got to kind of fit them into designated areas. Um, that's what I was kind of going for. Um, so what I did, and actually you can see the remnants, the marks that I made, I finally gave up that's one of the problems that I had with that second batch was it was like all the colors were like down here and it was all clear. So I finally just marked out equal spacing <laughs> and that helped a ton if you're going to do something like this. But I got to be honest, these were really tough to do because usually the way that I pour, you know, like the way that we poured like these ones, you're just kind of pouring it randomly and it just seems to work better. I, you know, it's hard to kind of keep things in like a small area. Um, so what I ended up having to do, these are the good ones. I like these the best. They kind of are, are a little bit more, um, I don't know, full, you know. And what I ended up doing was coming back and kind of um, mixing them a little bit. Um, because you just, it was, I was having trouble with these. But anyway, so these ones will go up eventually. And what I plan to do, I, I poured a couple extra batches um, beforehand. Um, so... What we have is these guys are all up for sale on my website right now. These were the ones that we poured. And then I actually poured, these are kind of more my standard colors that I usually pick. I had these already poured, so they're up there already as well. And what I'm actually doing with these, the three rainbows, they're not the worst. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm kind of, it's just not exactly what I was, what I wanted. Um, they kind of sunk to the bottom a little bit. So it's just not, not ideal. I don't really want to sell them. So what I decided to do was these six are going to be, I'm going to throw in an extra blank. Um, like if somebody purchases, you know, one of, one of these guys, um, I'm just going to, for like the first six people that order the, you know, any of these or, or these, I'm going to toss in an extra one of these um, just randomly. So there'll be kind of a little, a little extra goodie bag kind of thing. Uh, and then these guys, like I said, they're up for, for grabs on my website right now. And I'll get you guys a link to that. There's already one in the show notes. So if anybody wants to snag some graffiti blanks, they are up and running. And then those, the, the ones that I'm deeming worthy <laughs> of sale, um, I'll, I'll get these listed later. Um, there's five of them. So they're not up yet. Probably next week. So that is what is happening. So let's see here. First things first, let's get things rolling. I'm going to put this back in the oven. I kind of had it in there. A lot of people ask me how long, um, what temperature and how long to do um, heating molds. And so for, for like HDPE molds, um, I usually put them in for about 15 or 20 minutes. I don't really like them to get um, too hot. 
Um, silicone molds, I usually put them in for like half an hour. Um, I like to make sure that those things are nice and warm, especially when you're doing smaller amounts of resin, it helps it cure. Um, with, with just HDPE, it's just reducing surface tension. It'll, it'll, you know, for like your square molds, it'll help reduce that corner creep where the corners kind of creep in and you get rounded corners. Um, and the temperature that I leave mine at, it just tends to work out with the timings that I just said, that how long I leave it in. I have it set, I'm looking in here, so I have temperature gauges, like don't rely on the dial, <laughs> that thing is completely inaccurate. Um, get a, a thermometer that goes in the oven, and uh, I leave mine set at 150 Fahrenheit. Um, and then that just seems to work out, like I said, for HDPE molds, I leave them in for about, maybe about 15, 20 minutes. Um, and what I'm, what I'm shooting for is to try and get the, the HDPE to about 135 or so, 130, 135 degrees. Um, I don't it's, it's not a problem if they get hotter to you know, like 150, but they're kind of too hot, hot to touch at that point. So I don't really like them. So you, if you really want to, you could temperature gauge your, your molds. Um, but like I said, if you just kind of, for me, it works out that 150 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes, the HDPE is perfect. And then I just leave the silicone in for, for longer. I actually like them up around 150. So I just wanted to kind of cover that. So we got the, the mold in the oven and let's see here, I'm going to put some gloves on. So again, the blanks that were turning, I, 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 I and I actually kind of forgot there was, there was two reasons that I did it this way where I just filled the entire mold. One was I wanted to be able to cut into these things and like really get a, you know, like get a good idea of how do these things cut. The other thing is you're just going to waste a bunch of rocks. You're going to turn it away. It's going to make things more difficult. So there's really no reason to waste them all. Um, much better to just glue on chunks and you can make it look a little bit nicer as well. Uh, you know, this will be okay, but you do run into problems, especially for larger pieces getting it, you know, kind of filled evenly around that tube while the tube's in there, it's just harder. So I think you're much better off gluing the things on. Um, I would go with either a UV resin or, or epoxy, like a five minute epoxy. I think UV resin is really the way to go because you can, you know, get the little thing in place and then hit it with the light and it's, it's good. Um, and then cure it for a little bit. So let's see here. Yeah, I hope everybody that, that's been affected by all the gigantic freezing craziness <laughs> down, down in the southern part of the, the U.S. And, and I mean, even up, up north, you guys have been getting kind of hammered and the Midwest everywhere. Pretty much everywhere has gotten like snowmageddon, winter ice. And we haven't really, we're, we're just kind of dry. We had a few storms. So if you guys want to, go ahead and send all the snow to Tahoe because we need a lot more snow. <laughs> so if you can. All right, so we're going to switch to this view. I kind of, I think I'm settled on this, this, uh, the, the two cameras like this. I think this is by far the best way to go because I'm usually working with my hands, but at least you can see down in the corner, you know, what am I doing if, if it requires kind of, if you want to see what I'm actually kind of doing with my body. But I think this is definitely the, the best view. That way I don't forget and we miss something and I don't have to deal with it either, you know, like switching them all the time. So I think that, and I think a lot of you guys kind of said that too. Special design clips for pens. Um, actually, Turner's Warehouse has some. I don't know. Someone who's looking for a gavel. Hmm. There are some. I don't exactly know where. Maybe somebody else in the chat can help out. Snowboarding in the basement. <laughs> yeah, well, we've had some snow. I actually got a really good um powder day sort of sort of powder day um uh last tuesday it was fabulous um we caught the end it wasn't like the day of um but we caught some some powder and i had a really good day um so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to i got denatured alcohol in this little jug and i'm going to wipe these guys off just to make sure there's no oiliness or whatever you know, if you've been touching them with your hands, you got oils on your hands, on your fingers. So uh, I always do this if I'm doing, well, I do this before I glue tubes into, um, you know, pen blanks. Uh, but I also do it if I'm doing label blanks. Like basically any time I'm using tubes, I'm going to clean them off first just to make sure if there was something left over from the manufacturing process, cutting, 
um, you know, from the factory or if you've been kind of touching it or something was in the air. Always best to just wipe it off. That way you don't have to worry about it. All right, so we got that ready. Let me get my UV resin out. Uh, we're going to use Aluma UV. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this stuff. The only, I, it, way in the past, I had some issues with it because I didn't really realize, um, you know, you really got to let it cure uh, first. And I, I, it didn't work the way that I was trying to just hit it with a pen light for like 10 seconds, and that's not enough. You really got to give it some, some light, the, the correct UV light for, you know, a good 10, 15 minutes to fully cure everything. And then at that point, everything's good to go. So I'm digging it. Uh, you can get this at Turner's Warehouse or Illumilite, wherever you want. Pretty much, oh, I know how to pour this stuff. But I like to pour it out so that if I randomly, um, you know, hit the light, I don't want to cure the stuff in the bottle. Kind of like if you were, you know, using finish on something, you don't really want to contaminate the entire can of it. <clears throat> And then I think, let's see here, what am I going to do? So Chad had a really cool way of um, doing this where you just kind of, let's see, how did he do this? I think he just used like a toothpick, grabbed a little bit of, the, and I, these things may be a little bit too heavy, these, these, these uh, crystals. Um, but for like the really small um, opals, you can just put a little bit on your, your like toothpick or whatever you got and then like pick it up. So what, what I need to do is put these in cups real quick. So we got Moonstone. Again, these were sent in by, by Philip Danner. And he's got all kinds of different ones. These are, these are just a few of what he's got on his website. So dannerbuilds.com. And we got Labradorite. I have a little bit less of this in the, the Aura Quartz because they were a little bit smaller and just kind of fit a little bit better when I was just dumping them in. And I don't think I'm going to go crazy with these. I think what I'm going to do is probably we're going to kind of manipulate these into a design pattern or something that I like, but I don't necessarily, you don't necessarily need to encrust the entire thing, you know. Um, you could just kind of put a few of them. So I think I, I'm going to try that and just see how I like it. Again, just grab a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Where's the center's right here? Okay. We got our tube, and you could you could like mount something, mount your tube on something. I'm just going to hold it for now. Let's see if I can pick these guys up here. And yeah, they're kind of heavy, so. I think I'm gonna just have to, man. Now it's slippery. I'm gonna get some tweezers out because I got some somewhere. Do I have? Them? Might be kind of tough too, but tweezers here they are. These aren't really the best for for slippery rocks, but that's okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue on here. I place it. This is a really big rock. I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. We're going to go for smaller ones. The idea is we don't really want to cut into these if we don't have to. Let's go for slightly smaller. And I think what I can do is probably get away with I'm going to actually pull a paintbrush out as well. I think we can paint on a, a, a bit of the UV resin. And just kind of place these guys. Now again, you're probably going to be cutting into this, and I'm actually I'm going to scoot this one is still fairly large. I'm going to scoot it back because when you're turning a pen, the ends are going to be the thinnest, you know, point. I'm going to try and find some kind of thinner pieces to put at the ends, and you could even keep you know, the, the material away from the end if you wanted to. Aura Quartz really pops on that black. I like that one. That piece really looked pretty good. More of these guys. So it's kind of a finicky, delicate thing. 
Did I lose one? Okay, I lost one. Might have to hit these with light here. You guys know how much I love finicky, delicate processes. <laughs> That's looking pretty sweet. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit because I think it will be better. Another way you could do this is you could, you could just, you know, get UV resin or whatever you're using to glue it on and just dump things on it. That would be a little bit faster, but kind of like this. Be able to kind of place them exactly where I want. Shoot, where's my, I need to find my light. <clears throat> I'm actually going to turn that thing on and set it down so that I can these things where I want them. There we go. And hit it with the light. And at that point, that's this is the beauty of UV resin. Now they're stuck. They don't move. And we gotta paint some more on. These are a little bit bigger. So, you know, this is not going to keep you from turning into the rocks, I don't think, at all. Um, but it will, it will save you a little bit. Don't be turning into it nearly as much. Push. I turned my light off. There we go. Leave the light on. So the flat pieces are really, they're going to be really good for the ends. All right, so yeah. pretty cool. And again, we're not wasting because I'm, you know, the, the 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 blanks that I made. I mean, there's there's a ton of stuff. I'm I'm kind of keeping. You know the the very tip, the very end, um, clear of of raw of the crystals, um, just because I know that that's going to be tougher. Go with some of these guys. All right, so let me stop and see what's happening here. The shiny new mats are kind of blinding. Yeah. It can happen. Go with some of these guys here.
tend to kind of roll around, slide all over the place. All right, so slowly but surely here, doing it. Again, this is just a, a junior gent type of you know, kit. So it can work with lots of different, you know, specific kits. I like doing, I, I really like those. If you're going to make like a roller ball, I like the junior line because there's so many choices. They all look pretty good. We're looking pretty good. We're getting it encrusted. Here. A big chunk. I'm gonna put a big chunk right there. So I don't know how long we've been going here, but it, it goes, you know, it goes reasonably fast. It's not, not that bad. It's kind of like making the rings. You're going to have to spend a little bit of time, but you'll get there. I think this thing's going to look pretty sweet. So one thing that you can do is use one of the plugs from the, the P-Town Subby kit to kind of hold it in place. That might help a little bit, especially once you flip it.
Some guys are hard to pick up sometimes. And you could do this, you know, with any of the like gemstone type things, like you know, the opals are a good one too. There's you know lots of colors of those. You get pretty crazy with these things. Exactly where I wanted that, but that's fill in. All right, so we're almost to the end. I'm going to start using the, the thinner ones down here at the end again. All right, a couple more to go here. Do we have anything in here? There we go. Good one. Ooh, that's a good one. All right, we got the big barrel done, and I used way less than I did on the, that first one that I made. So what I'm going to do now, let me switch to the intro cam. What I'm going to do now is we're going to hook up the, the nail machine. It's just a UV light. Plug it in. And all I'm going to do is just, so let me see if I can get out of the way a little bit. I'm going to kind of slide this little tray out a little bit. Drop this guy on the tray, standing up vertically. Ooh, and it fits perfect. Slide it in there, and then I'm going to turn it on. All right, and that'll, that'll let it kind of, you know, bake in UV rays. All right, so Billy's here. What's up, man? How you feeling, bud? <laughs> I'm a patient man, yeah. I'm usually not a very patient man, but... You know, sometimes you just have to. Alright, so, let's get on to this one. Uh, this one I'm... let's see here. Hmm. Let's try let's try doing it a slightly different way. Um hmm. What I was going to do is just just paint on a, a, a like a full strip on top of this and just dump some on and just kind of see how that goes. The problem with that though is these these crystals are pretty big and kind of heavy and I think they're just going to kind of slide all over the place. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh let's give it a shot and just see what happens. I don't I don't think it's going to be the most amazing thing on the planet, but you never know. 
so let me let me actually get a little um let me get a little cup or something let's see here. what do i got yeah there's a lid let's just let's just give it a shot because you know it might be worth trying out let's go with these guys because they're kind of the smaller round ones We'll just give it a, we'll give it a whirl. Let's see what happens. Like I said, I'm kind of banking on failure. <laughs> on this. Uh, can you kind of see what I'm doing? I'm right in the middle. Let me, let me kind of zoom in a little bit. I mean, it's tough because I don't want to zoom in too far and then I'm in, I end up doing stuff off camera. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to kind of paint a line of UV resin on the top. This might just make things go a little bit faster, you know? Kind of speed the process up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just kind of, yep, they just kind of roll off. <laughs> nope, that one's stuck. Yeah, this they just they just slide because they're so heavy. This, that's the type of thing that you would want to do with, um, you know, much lighter things. I think. Here we go. We got one. Let's see if I can see if I can get a couple of these guys on the top. Nope. Yep, I'm telling you, you gotta you gotta have some patience. Gotta put the patient hat on. This will be kind of a little bit different too on this. We're we're gonna make a row of these little quartz things. One more. I can do it. One more. Here we go. Look at that. Actually, that alone would be kind of a neat, a neat look for a pen. Just having, you know, making it kind of minimal in a sense. Hmm. I think we'll kind of keep that going. I'm going to, I'm going to flip it over on the other side and we're going to go with let's see here let's since we're using like three types let's kind of try to break this you know circle into thirds <clears throat> and we'll just put a line of each one i don't know i'll have a little bit of fun with this i might have hit my watch what, where you're pointing your uv light oh that's not where i wanted that hold on i gotta wipe that off <clears throat> a super chat thanks mel i appreciate it yeah i hope this looks cool i don't know well i don't screw it up <laughs> there we go wiping i just want to wipe all that what i just put on there i kind of put it right on the back side I, we're, we're trying to split this into thirds so let's let's say like like right here maybe it's not going to be perfect you know but whatever we'll try it well i'm just going to try my best here do or do not there is no try okay and then we'll go with these guys so these guys are aura quartz a u r a that's what the ones that we put on first. Aura, and you kind of crossed it out. It's A U R A quartz. Um, let's go with some moonstone. That's what this is. Next one. Do a little bit of moonstone. Yeah, I'm going to try and get kind of a thinner one for the end. Just don't. They always like stick to like the the, the tiniest side that I don't want to actually have stuck there. There we go. There. there. And this guy, this one, come on, work with me. This guy, and this guy, oh, he didn't want to work with me. There we go. And let's see here. So 
keep in mind, they're not going to be, you know, the top points are not going to be pointy. We're going to turn that down. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at this. Not going to be exactly how we, you know, how I've laid this out in the end. Let's try, give me, come on, give me a good one. I don't like that one. This one, that's the one. Get in there. Come on. Single file, let's go. Okay. Light, here we go. All right, so I think I did pretty good with the spacing. It's not too bad. I think I accidentally hit my UV resin in this cup <laughs> with the light, so I'm gonna toss it. There's, I got one rock in there that's kind of, I'm, I'm gonna sacrifice that one. It is completely covered in resin. Okay, so let's get a little bit more UV resin for our last line, and then we can go turn these things and see how they work. Let's, where's my UV resin? Here we go. All right, so we'll pour a little bit more in here. It seemed like it was kind of skinning over. I didn't like that. I think I'm even going to get a new brush. I got another one. Okay. Now we are ready to finish this guy up. So if you're just joining the fun, we got one ready. I, I did this beforehand. I did it differently. I just filled the entire cavity with, with a bunch of rocks because the, the point is we want to see how these things turn. Oh, it didn't. Oh my God. No, my light didn't work. Maybe I turned it off on accident. Okay. I think we're okay. Single file. Mm, okay. Turn it on. You will stick. There we go. All right, now they're stuck. All right, last row, we are gonna do some, uh, not moonstone, so the last one is Labradorite. Let me hold that up for you guys. Labradorite. Craziness, whoa. Okay, so. Paint another strip here. And we'll pull out Labradorite. Try and find some thinner ones for the ends. And here's a good one. Oh, yeah. Okay. And this guy looks good. Oh, hang on, buddy. That's a good one. And this one's a good one. Good one. And one more kind of thin one. That went really fast. Getting better at it. Whoa. That could have been horrible. All right. Light time. That one went really fast. Look at that. All right, I'm just going to give this a little bit more just to make sure I got everything held in place before I move this. And then we're going to go and put this guy in our light thing. Come on. 
would fit. Oh, oh man, that's really close. Ooh, it just barely fit. All right. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of came up with the contraption where, because you can take that shelf out, um, where it lifts up the, the lights. That probably would have been easier to do. All right, so let's see here. $40 a gallon? Hmm. Yeah, um, the nice thing is, so I, I usually use a Lumilite clear slow set for most of my pen blanks and stuff. I like the time with that, um, mainly. I, I actually do also like how it turns a little bit better than everything else that I've tried. Um, but uh, it's kind of negligible, um, splitting hairs. But um, some of them I definitely don't like turning. But um, <clears throat> if you want a slightly cheaper one that works pretty good, I'm the, the only issue I have, if you're making pen blanks, and you're trying to keep colors separated. I don't like the, the long working time, but Amazing Clearcast Plus is not too bad. I mean, you guys have seen that I've, I've been using that. That's what I'm gonna use for, for casting these things. Um, and it's definitely cheaper. Uh, if you want the, the Plus, then you get the UV protection. If you don't want Plus, that stuff's, I wanna say that stuff's 40 bucks a gallon too. Maybe, maybe 50, um, but not too bad. It's a pretty good epoxy, but you have the longer working time, so. Um, I'm not too familiar with alternatives that are kind of quicker, um, that, that work as good as Illumilite Clear Slow Set. But for the most part, most resins will do the job just fine. Um, some will do better than others in certain conditions, but as long as you're casting, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm actually going to put these guys away. I just want to get this this area clear so that we're ready to rock when it is time. Make sure I got all my pieces. So again, what I want to do is I want to leave these guys in there, um, probably you know for 10 to 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes. Longer is better. Uh, you know you can't overcook it, <laughs> but you can undercook it kind of. Um, and we have our mold in the oven. I don't have a problem leaving silicone molds in the oven like all day. That's fine. Um, let's see here. I think that's about it. So let's head over to the lathe. And let's start turning these things. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be not the funnest blank I've ever turned in my, in my life, but it should be interesting. So again, I'm going to be using carbide. I would recommend uh, using carbide for, for anybody else also. Otherwise, you're just going to take, your, your, your tool is going to hit it and it's just going to be dull. Like it's, it's going to be terrible sharpening. So uh, let me, I'm just going to kind of turn. See here. Oh, boards. Working with me here. See if I can just turn this and I'll just kind of turn this off. Um, and you guys can kind of watch as I set up the cameras over here and get things kind of going. So hold up real quick. We'll get going over on the lathe. So, again, what I did was I cast two bin with a Sierra, uh, you know, Sierra tube. Uh, it could be, you know, and there's Sierras, or there's tons of them. There's Wall Street, there's, there's Gatsby, um, all kind of the same thing, slightly different, different like manufacturers or brands, I guess. Um, but that type of, of blank is what we're dealing with. Uh, you might see that I, can you guys see over here? Yeah, you can. I got the, the Laguna LED light. Oh man, this thing is awesome. Uh, I know it's not cheap, but I'll tell you what, it really, it's, it's even good for video um, because you can direct the light the right way and it's, you can put it in infinite, you know, areas. So it's really nice. I don't have to bring lights over here anymore. Uh, let's see here. Switch this thing. I got the, the camera dialed in for, um, for casting, but it's not as good necessarily for turning. So I might have to do a little dialing in here. I don't know. Let me see how that looks. 
I know you guys are tilted. Sorry about that. Let's see how this looks on camera. Oh, that's not too bad. It's looking pretty good, actually, I think. All right, so uh, let me zoom that out a little bit. And we're doing between centers. I have a dead center in the headstock and a, and a live center that can spin in the tailstock. You can get that stuff if you want to do the, the tube or the um, between center turning. If you, want, if you want to get set up for that, you can get all that equipment at Turner's Warehouse and lots of other places too. All right, so let's see here. Let's get on the camera. So I got my bushings to the, the between center bushings and they just hook into these cones. All right. Let me get uh, let me get a drink real quick and we'll get rolling let me see let me just check the comments see if any, anything came up here level three vest i don't think it's going to be that bad i don't know i don't know oh yeah that space shuttle kit that would be a cool one for these Okay, so let me turn my phone on so I can kind of my eyes on the comments a little bit here. Uh, let's see my. Uh, and so the question is: regular carbide or negative rake? Um, I think either way is going to be okay. Let's start with. I think I think I want to try both of them actually. Um, so we'll start. I have a car, uh, negative rake on there right now, so on my tool. So let's just start with that, and then we'll switch over and kind of see, you know, if, if anything changes. Basically, <clears throat> all right. So and super asked, uh, it's the Sierra kit. Things set up, and I'm using the easy finisher size tool. I like that for pen turning, it works pretty good. And then again, the negative rake cutter. Do that or not, but it's negative. So that works great for, for you know, resin. It'll tame tough materials. I just think it works better in general on resins um, for the most part, but it is a little bit slower, um, you know, like the, the normal that you know the regular carbide cutters they're going to turn a little bit faster but it'll chip so you're kind of you know one strategy could be to use the regular carbide to kind of hog away material and then switch to finish up with negative rake i don't know that especially for pens i definitely don't think it's worth it but for larger pieces that could be a decent way to go so i'm going to get my dust collection set up here I'm really excited. I think I got everything planned for my dust collector, my new one that I'm going to get. Um, now I just basically have to order it. So very excited about that. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of work <laughs> but setting up, but it should be pretty nice. So let me get this even closer. I want to try and get as much of this dust as possible. And I'm also going to turn a fan on. Hold on real quick. Um, behind me. To kind of blow any dust away i would highly recommend wearing a face mask for this um, i don't know if the uh, that might have been the question that i was going to ask if you're like sanding these these uh these um crystals should you be wearing more protection i don't know if philip's still here um because i know like seashells those things are nasty you definitely want a full-on respirator uh, if you're turning those things I don't know about rocks. I doubt, I mean, you don't want to breathe the dust either way, but I don't know if it's any worse than wood dust or resin dust or anything. Well, here we go. All right, so we'll turn the dust collector on. Get this thing spinning. Now 
and I'm gonna put a face mask on too. I don't really think it's gonna blow up on me, but we'll see. Let me get my light a little bit different here. Definitely hard, but we are cutting it. Yeah, lapidary wet sanding, that's true. I, I think that there might actually, you might be able to find tools that have like a diamond. You know, that's like not carbide, but diamond. I, I don't, I mean, they don't have them like for turning tools that I know of, but there might be things like for, for metalworking um, tools that, that might have like a diamond tip on them. That might actually work a little better on this kind of thing. I don't know. And I'm going, you know, I got this thing wound out to 3,500. It's definitely not enjoying it though. Stuff's hard. So the problem that we have here also is you're going to be generating a lot more heat, which could cause issues with the resin as well. We'll just keep going. <laughs> it's, it's not even cutting it. Man, it's really not wanting to cut it at all. Well, we'll just keep going. We'll try and get this thing at least round. Man, <laughs> this is some hard stuff. It's no bueno, yeah. <laughs> is this like way high on the Mohs hardness scale? Yeah. <laughs> it's just not really doing a whole lot. Um, one, let me, let me, let's, let's try and switch. Let's switch to the regular carbide just to see if that does anything at all differently. Well, before we do that, I'm just going to turn my cutter just to see. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't even, my cutter's not even round anymore, guys. <laughs> Look at that. Can you, can you see that? Well, let me, let me like zoom in. Let me, I, I gotta get a good shot of this because it, it literally, my, my, the cutter's not even, it's like flat on one end, I think. Can you see the upper, right up there? Let me, let me get a little pointer stick. Hopefully I can show you. Right up there, there's a flat <laughs> on the cutter. Uh, 
Oh man. All right, so. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, Dremel with diamond cutters, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. All right, so here's here's my alternative because I don't have diamond cutters or any of that stuff, um, and I'm definitely gonna be wearing a face mask for this. So. What I got up my sleeve, I gotta find it. All right, so I've got a piece of wood. Let me zoom back out. I've got a piece of wood with some uh, Velcro stuff on it. And we are, I wish I actually had something even lower, but I got some 80 grit Abronet. And we are just gonna try and sand this and see how that goes. I, I will I will admit when I was barrel trimming let me let me I'm, I feel like I'm yelling at you guys. Dust collectors really loud in my ears. Um, when I was uh, I didn't barrel trim this I, I I used like the sanding method but even when I was grinding you could see that I kind of ground the corners down. I mean even my grinder didn't really want to <laughs> cut this stuff. <laughs> so I, I kind of had an idea that this was not really going to go super swell. But I wasn't about to throw in the towel until I put tool to the stone. Take it over to CBN wheel, yeah. I don't think I want to do that. Not so comfortable with my expensive CBN wheels. I I don't know. I don't really know if they're they can do that or not. Sandpaper, I don't mind trying. All right, so let's give this a shot. Let me go get my face mask because this is just going to create, not not that turning didn't create a ton of dust too, but the way that I have the fan system set up and the dust collector, it does generally doesn't put that much dust in the air in my face. This definitely will. Let me get my face mask on. I'm actually going to turn my little air cleaner thing on just to blow it even further. All right, so let's see how sanding goes on these. Man, I thought seashells were tough. This, <laughs> this, is, this is way worse than seashells. Uh, another one that you could do is maybe a file. We could try that, get a, a, a file out. Um, I, I'm not super comfortable. I've never done that on a lathe, but I know that you can do that. I just don't know if it would be how well that would work. <laughs> yeah. I think I would probably slow it. And actually, I think I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. You don't really need to be going as fast as I was. Let's try, let's start out at like 1500. I was going like 3500. Uh, let me make sure that I'm doing this right. Yeah. This may need to be like the no lathe pen, but I mean, that is kind of working, I think. <clears throat> Doesn't feel very good, I'll tell you that much. Pretty tough, guys. Acetone? Die grinder? Yeah. High speed steel works okay? <laughs> I don't think so. It's the 80 grit uh, gouge. 
grinder. Yeah, I know. Oh, to get my pen tube back. Uh, NWL, I'm seeing what you just posted there. I mean, you can see some stuff coming off. I'm gonna slow it down. Um, faster is not better. That just hurts your hands even more. <laughs> it's just melting through my paper. Oh man, let's see if I can just, what it feels like just in your hand. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know guys. Uh, let's try... I don't know that I recommend... I have seen people do this. I don't know that I really recommend it. I'm going to try it without the lathe on real quick. We're going to use a big file here. I don't think that's doing anything. Nope, it's slipping. I think that's doing a whole lot guys <laughs> i think you're best off yeah i don't know I, I have no clue what the best way to do this is the only way that i know of that would at least kind of work is probably my i have a i think a 40 or maybe 60 grit on my belt sander i mean that would kind of work but Man, um, yeah. Well, okay. So since we're <laughs> since we're here, uh, since we're here, let let me just rotate my cutter. This cutter's dead anyway, and it and it worked for like a second. So let's just see how far we can get with this thing since we're <laughs> since we're here. I don't recommend it. And I probably wouldn't recommend, I think we're going to be kind of screwed on those other ones that we just cast to. Because I don't really want to turn it. That's the problem is when it's so hard that you're like, I don't even want to turn this. You know you're kind of in trouble. So I've rotated the cutter, my flat spots over here now. <laughs> so let's, let's turn it back on. Let's get some, get some dust collection here. It didn't come apart though. Like I said, I didn't really think it was going to come apart. Turn the dust collector on. Let's see what we got. I'm going to scoot it a little closer here. I mean, it works for like a second until it flattens the edge. Let's just keep going. I'm going to turn it. I 
how to torture carbide tip. So we demolished the tip completely and we still haven't even gotten it round. <laughs> I did get one little chip out right there. <laughs> this is some hard stuff. Oh man. I think we're going to have to throw in the towel guys because I mean I could sit here for days and it's not really going to do much I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was worth a try. Worth a try. Pray to the aliens that carved the crystal skulls. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, guys. I think that... I can't... Th uh, Diamond might cut that stuff. Um, but, you know... It, Philip was mentioning that usually the you know your 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 wet grinding things when you're dealing with lapidary, and so you know you kind of need a lubricant and you definitely need something that's way harder than these than carbide. One of the problems with carbide is it's actually really brittle, um, so I'm not really surprised that it's kind of wearing it down. It might have actually been kind of chipping it off um, because the 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 material is so hard. So. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think high speed steel. I, I think it would just, you'd have to be jamming it in because I really had to force it into that, which is really not good. You know, you don't want to be doing that. So, <laughs> anyway. Oh, man. Let me. S <laughs> yeah, I, I tried turning it. Yeah, we got our answer. So, let me hold on a minute. I'm going to look up something that I think is on Easy Inlay's site. I want to look at, the, uh, they had a couple things that, had to do with uh, I, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I think they have a yeah, here we go. So they have a Mohs hardness scale, and they have a couple of uh, examples of different stuff. So the let's see. So like that, you know, that cultured opal stuff, that is what was the Mohs on that? Just to give you, and Mose is like this hardness scale that, that I, I wasn't familiar with it, but, um, but Scott over at Easy Inlay had brought, brought it up. Let's see, what, are, what is this opal stuff? I'm trying to find on their website what it says. On the Mose hardness scale, okay. The cultured opals have a hardness scale of four on the Mose, M-O-H-S thing. Um, let me see if I can find, do I, do I not have it? Oh, here we go. So let me, oh, I don't have my, hold on real quick. Let me get my camera back over here. Some of you guys might know more about this Moe's. <laughs> when I think of Moe's, I think of the Simpsons bar. Moe's tavern. Let me get my camera set back up over here so I can kind of show you guys some stuff. Show you what I'm finding. I gotta readjust it too. What a pain. Okay. All right, I think we're back in business with this camera now. Yeah, I've I've turned some seashell stuff and I mean, it wasn't fun, but I'll tell you what, I got through it with a carbide tip. 
not so much. Now, the one thing that I didn't try, I guess, is, is a regular cutter. <laughs> but I, I don't know that I care to even worry about what it might do. All right, so this stuff, the cultured opal, that's four. Oh, I guess I opened that upside down. That's smart. Nope, I'm losing my cultured opals. And the only reason I'm, I'm showing you this is I, they have a couple of things. They have a Mohs hardness scale on their website that I want to, and it has some examples. So, you know this stuff, the stuff that you put in, like, in your rings and things. Most people are kind of familiar with that. Um, on their little scale thing here, they have, so, talc, gypsum, calcite. These are one, two, and three. And then you got your, you know, this stuff is, is four. And I guess copper coin is between three and four. Quartz is seven. Um, I guess it doesn't have any other things. Turquoise is like five and a half. Uh, glass, I think, is also, maybe. Topaz is 8. And then diamond is 10. So that kind of gives you an idea of, of some different hardnesses. Now, I think one thing that would be nice, I don't know if they have a Mohs hardness for carbide and steel and, you know, different things like that. But um, I don't know if that applies to that kind of thing. But, you know, I think that if you're going to try and cut this stuff, you'd probably need a diamond tip tool. Mohs for seashells, two and a half to three and a half. That's not too bad. Some of, I don't know, tungsten. Well, it's tungsten carbide, probably, maybe. maybe well, there's, I guess tungsten is different than tungsten carbide. But I think that's what carbide is, is tungsten carbide, I believe. I, I, don't quote me on that, though. So, anyway. Um, so, here's the deal. We... We still have some things to cast. Um, <laughs> uh, we may as well just cast it because otherwise that tube is just kind of sitting there doing nothing. And I kind of want to see what that looks like in a blank a little bit. Uh, it might be doable to cut less of these things, to cut a little bit less of it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm really willing to just waste another carbide tip, but we're here. Why don't we just dunk these guys in resin we got the mold ready <laughs> you sent the hardest ones yeah yeah i don't know uh, you know that's the thing though yeah i mean i don't know i i i, I turned seashells fine um i don't know what what were they again two and a half to three and a half yeah, I mean, you know, knock off the end crystals. Um, yeah, actually, one thing that, and I don't know how it would work. I don't know. What I was going to say is one thing that I could do is just grind those, <laughs> grind the stones on the tube before casting it, grind it down. Uh, it's going to be really hard to hold that tube on a, on a grinder, though. I don't know how well that's going to work. I can't get a camera over there. Let's, because this isn't really going to go anywhere, most likely anyway, or turn out good. Let me go, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over to my, my belt sander, and I'm going to just kind of see what, what happens if I just kind of try and hold this thing and... Actually, I think I might use my disc sander. It's just a little easier to kind of get up in there. Um, let's just see what happens on that, just grinding these down. Because if I could get them down far enough to where they're really below the, the resin level, then you could get this thing done. Um, but the way to do this, you know, this, this could be totally doable if you had smaller stones, if, they, if, if you just got them and, and they weren't poking out of the resin, this would totally work. And I even think, you know, even if you had little bits kind of poking out here and there, I think you could get through it with sanding or doing something, like to, to just kind of grind that down, even, even really with a carbide tool. It's going to be jacked, but I think it would, you know, very small cuts. I think you could get through it. But let's, let's just see what happens if I grind this down a little bit. 
if it goes flying out of my hand or if they come flying off the tube. I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot. Hold on real quick and I'll be right back. So I ground a little bit on this, <laughs> I mean, sparks are flying. I think I was grinding on Moonstone and it didn't really, I mean, you'd be there for a while and you kind of, what I think you would end up doing is probably screw it, like, like mess up your, your, your sandpaper wheel. Um, I'm not sure what grit disc I have on there, but I don't know guys. I don't think I'd recommend this. I think if you're going to do this kind of thing with with like a gemstone or you know um crystals whatever these are I I really think that the best way to go is just go for really tiny pieces that are going to definitely be under that resin because <laughs> I think you're just going to spin your wheels with this kind of stuff and uh and screw up your tool edges. Anyway, uh so <laughs> unfortunately, let's see um well okay let me let, i'm just gonna cast these anyway let me blow this off because it probably has some little bit of dust let's just dump it in some resin and it'll be i'll stick it on my my table back there and remind me not to do this again um a few of those rocks actually kind of went flying off of this thing too um so i just i don't know i don't think it's i don't think it's a good one for for pen turning and you know turning type things um here's where i think this stuff would be fabulous though um well maybe not i was gonna say you could fill um you know like on bowls where and it's kind of the same idea with uh that people use the like turquoise and all that kind of stuff um you're still dealing with really hard material but if, if you if you use small enough rocks and then again filled over it with resin so you're not actually having to sand down the crystals themselves um, this would be really cool inlay material on like bowl rims or you know whatever um, even on like you know river tables these are maybe a little bit small for that kind of thing but um, i think that the best way to go is just they're cool but you got to cover them with resin and not have to like sand them down so let's let's get these guys going. Let's uh, what do we got here? Do we got our camera ready? We do, I think. The shelf of no, actually the shelf of sh this is not a shelf of shame. There's only one piece that was a failure on there. Um, it, it's some some of them are reminders though. All right, so let's see here. We're gonna pull out our mold. That way, at least you guys can see how to do this. You know, what I did basically. I'm really bummed. I actually think this one would have been, this is, this is a cool way to go right here. I think that one would have been pretty sweet. All right, so we have little plugs that go in, let's see here, on the long one. We've got bigger plugs that go in the bigger ones, right? So all you do is you're just gonna take and, and oops, take and put that in there. And I like to kind of push it in, as, you know, as far as I can get it. Push the other guy in. And the way these molds work, you might see, let me, let me zoom in. Let's see here. Let me zoom in. You can kind of see what ends up happening here. You can't just push these things because it, it pops back, right? So what you have to do is you want to hold both of these guys and then pull the mold walls out a little bit so that basically it's kind of forcing the plugs this way. All right, so now we got a good tight fit Otherwise, you can end up having resin go into the tube, which you do not want, obviously. All right, so we'll do the same thing over here. That guy loaded up. Whoops. Hold on a minute. 
little bit. These things don't really seem to fit too well. There we go. Doesn't take a lot. Just just give it a little bit of a tug, so that it's kind of the the mold walls are sucking those plugs in. All right, so we got our mold. I'm actually going to toss this right back in the oven, so it'll stay warm while we're getting things prepped here. Um, I actually tried so the let's see where's where's the murder blank i'm telling you guys what we need to do is we need to fill an entire bowl with these uh with these um crystals and then send that to carl that's an actual murder bowl the only thing murderous about that bowl that carl turned from peter was polyester resin This would actually be murder. Be like, hey, Carl, we made you something. It'll be fun to turn. I love it. <laughs> All right, so this one that I tried turning, oh, let me zoom out a little bit. The one that I tried turning today, I used ACC, let me, let me just actually, let me stop. <laughs> let me read my notes. The black, yeah, okay, so the black tube was ACC Plus, Amazing Clearcast Plus. And then I also tried one with Liquid Diamonds just to see if there was really any difference. I saw no difference, so, you know, whatever. Um, no big deal there. So we're just gonna go with some ACC Plus again. My new favorite resin for random things. All right. And let me switch to the casting view. This is it truly evil? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to Carl. <clears throat> it's really no fun if you can't even turn it. Although it would be interesting to see if he figured something out that it worked better. I can't think of anything though. I got nothing. All right, so we got ACC plus. Uh, this is the stuff that has the UV uh, inhibitor in it. And they also have just amazing clear cast regular. It has no UV inhibitors, and that's compared to slow set clear. You know, Alumilite clear slow. Um, it has no UV inhibitors in it either. So if you're going for dead clear stuff, this is a pretty good one to go with, I think. Liquid Diamonds has some, see here's the biggest, here's the toughest part of um, this UV inhibitor and in, in resin yellowing issue is eventually they're, they're, they don't care what they put in it, they're, it's gonna yellow. Um, there are a couple resins that claim that they won't yellow ever, but I, Many people that I've talked to said that that's not actually possible. So, um, so eventually they will, but supposedly they got a lot of UV inhibitor in this. Uh, one of these days I'm going to do kind of a little comparison to kind of see, um, you know, how does it compare to liquid diamonds? Liquid diamonds has some in it, but again, there's no scale. You have no clue how much is in any of these things. So it's kind of, kind of tough, you know, trying to figure that out. All right, so one of the tough things that I have with doing these tiny tube in things with a volume measurement resin is I don't really have very small volume cups. Um, so we're probably gonna kind of waste a little bit, but I, this is the smallest one that I have that has graduations on it. So I'm just gonna put in it, the smallest one I got is one ounce. So we're gonna do two ounces. That's way too much for this mold, but what I got. All right, so we got our part A. Another reason I like, even, even if I'm doing something small, uh, a lot of times with these volume things, I'll just pour more 
anyway because um, you, you get, I don't know, the smaller the amount that you're mixing together, uh, the more accurate it needs to be. So sometimes I'll just kind of pour more. Um, I have some other molds that I could pour the excess into. Maybe put a color or something in there. Uh, the nice thing about this is we got plenty of time for me to pull that out. We got our part B. So again, this is one to one by volume. So if you're doing a volume measurement, that means that you're going to use a graduated cup like this, not a scale. Make sure to read the instructions. Even if you think you bought the resin that, you've, that everybody's using or whatever, um, just read the instructions on anything new that you buy. Just to double check because that's one of the biggest mistakes, easiest to make is you think it's you know one, one type of measurement and it's actually the other. Um, actually, people get amazing clear cast and Alumilite clear mixed up a lot. So Alumilite clear slow and just the, the clear um, those are going to be measured by weight. They have to be. And then the ACC and ACC Plus, those are both volume. They have to be me measured by volume. All right, so let's mix this guy up here. Pneumatic chisels. <laughs> I know. Uh, get a jackhammer out. We'll turn this. Stone carving. I don't know what that did that. Huh. Oh, no, I, sorry, I didn't mean to hide your message. I hit the wrong button. Let's see if I can. Shoot. Hold on. Oh, no. Goodness. Sorry about that. I, <laughs> I didn't mean. I, it, it hit it for some reason. It was, and I, and then I hit, I hit hide instead of, you know, like post it or whatever. Sorry about that. My bad. I should let the let the moderators just handle these things. But there was nothing wrong with the comment. <laughs> so if you want to say it again, go ahead. You remember. All right, and I'm, because we're going to pressurize this, I'm not going slow or doing anything. I'm putting tons of bubbles in there. Not, I don't care. It's no big deal. That's another reason why I, I just flat out prefer using pressure because I don't want to sit around and like, for you, with this, how thick it is, it's really tough to mix thick resins and not get a bunch of air bubbles in the cup. It is really tough. So I'd rather just not worry about it. Shove it in a pressure pot and it takes care of the problem. Liquid diamonds is a little bit thinner. And I'm, the only reason I mention those two, it's the only two that I really use um, from epoxies. But liquid diamonds is a little bit thinner. Actually, the, on, the only other one is, is deep pour. Um... And that works fine too. Uh, one thing that blew my mind about the deep pour is it's kind of formulated for kind of larger, deeper, not, not as much as Alumilite Clear slow. That you can pour in gigantic masses. Um, but you know, like thicker three inch tabletop slabs, it's, you know, and it's got a, like a way long, like a two hour working time. And so I wasn't sure how well it would handle pouring very small amounts, but I mean, I made dice using deep pour and it worked fine uh, it did you did need to leave it in the mold and let it sit for like a week to fully harden up but it hardened up fine so doable it's a thinner one but it doesn't have any uv protection either so i don't know that it has a lot of advantage for for, for things like that I think it's best for river tables and the like. All right, so with epoxies, I tend to kind of overmix. You got 45 minutes of working time. You may as well just sit and spend a few minutes mixing it up so that you don't have any issues. I think that's good now. <clears throat> so we'll pull our mold out. 
And what you're gonna wanna do, and this goes with any anything that you're casting, what, what I'm gonna try and do is pour kind of a thin stream and let it kind of fill from the bottom up. Um, you know, get it down below the tube and let that resin kind of flow in up and around. That way you're not trapping huge air pockets. All right, so can you guys see sort of? It's gonna be kind of a tough one to really capture. There we go. There we go. All right, so like I said, I just let it get down below there and then fill that cavity and it just kind of works itself up over the, over your tube. And I'm gonna do the same for this one. If you want, you can kind of tap it around a little bit, try and get some of the really big air bubbles to move. But you don't really have to. I mean, it's, it's, you should be fine. We got that thing done. That can just kind of sit there for right now. Let's find something to fill. Uh, I only got like one ounce or so left. Um, trying to find a mold. I would like to use for this here. Hmm. What do I got? What do I got? Hmm. I need to get some more kind of like small random molds. Let's see. I have the little, uh, I don't even know where it is at this point. Oh, there it is. I have the little, uh, these are like little pendant things. So why don't we add a little bit of my favorite. Let's do a little bit of blurple and we can make some blurple, uh, little, little pendant things. Get my blurple out. Um, actually, let's do something slightly different. I want to play with... I want to play with Macro Pearl. Um, does... Yeah, Macro Sparkle. Let's try the, the P-Town Subby Macro Sparkle. Ooh. Zoom out. Whoa, zoom out. All right. So, let's see here. So, Mel... Um, is Mel still here? Yeah, Mel's here. Um, since you super chatted, what I want to do is we're going to use this stuff, but I want to add a color to this. So pick a color, pick any, we're, we're just going to use a little bit of dye, um, Alumilite's transparent dye, and we're going to color this and make it kind of blingy sparkle. Ooh, a ring mold, that'd be a good one, yeah. Cult 
Calling on Mel. Which color do you want to see? Macro Sparkle. Sparkle Pop. Blue. Nice. All right. So let's go with uh, what I'm going to do here is I think I'm just going to put there's not very much resin. Um, I'm going to go with ocean blue. That's a good light one. So it'll work pretty well for this. Let's just, let's put a, let's start with just a, um, did I open that thing up? We'll start with just a, a toothpick amount, just a kind of a pinprick of it. We don't need a whole lot of color necessarily. I'm going to kind of mix that in. We're going to see how, how well that did. Might need a little bit more than that. Let's do one more pin prick. Two pin pricks. A little bit more than a pin prick, maybe, but you get the idea. Okay, and then how much am I gonna put in there? One, only one ounce. Let's try an eighth teaspoon and see how that goes. So this stuff's pretty, pretty wicked stuff. I think it's kind of the same idea as the macro pearl from Caster's Choice. This stuff really actually looks pretty awesome. I mean, if you wanna go for kind of a, like a fake diamond cast, you know, like people use like the diamond dust things in blanks. I mean, this stuff approximates that pretty well. Pretty nice looking. Um, I think, yeah, that's gonna look pretty good. I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little bit more. We'll go for a quarter teaspoon total. Load it up. These are chunky, real nice and chunky flakes of this stuff. I'm gonna zoom. That'll be pretty sweet. What do you think? All right, so let's see how many of these guys we can make. I'm gonna close this lid before I dump resin in there. Put it away, put my die away. Okay. Now we're ready. Oops, wrong way. There we go. Sparkly. And the one thing about this is I'm, I usually use slow set clear which is, you know, fast setting. I always like that. I, actually, I'm kind of glad that they got rid of the, the set. They call it Illumilite Clear Slow because <laughs> it actually is a fast setting resin. Um, so I don't know if this stuff will settle out or how that's going to work because I'm pouring it kind of right away. It'll be a good test. We'll see what happens. All right, so we got one. I like this little moon one. Just let that sit for a second. We'll do the round one next to it. Uh. 
How about a square? Uh, let's see. A little bit left in here. I think we can might be able to actually fill all these guys. I don't know. All right, still going. And I kind of like this one. How about this one? Mm, I think that's all we get. All right, so we got a few little pendants going on. We got our thing. This thing cleared up quite a bit. So let me move the pendants. When I poured this, it was just nothing but bubbles. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this on this angle, but cleared up a little bit. Looking good. There's no problems or anything like that. So it's releasing a few air bubbles here and there. But at this point, all we got to do is pop it in the pressure pot. So I'll get my little thing out here. I'm going to pop these on the bottom. These can go on the top. And you can see down in the bottom corner there, pop this guy in my pressure pot. And this stuff will need to sit overnight. So that's another drawback that I don't love about slow setting resins. They usually need to stay in the pressure pot longer. Um, on the bottle, ACC plus, I don't know, I want to say that they, they say the demold time is something like 18 hours. That's not really, I don't find that to be the case for, for the pressure pot. Um, usually I can just pull these things out like overnight. Give it maybe well, for larger castings, if I was doing like these handles, just overnight's fine. Um, you might want to stretch it for something thin like these, these things, smaller, to maybe like 24 hours fully, I guess, actually. I, I had to take that back a little bit. <clears throat> but for larger castings, if you're doing like a pen blank thing or something like that, it's, it's a lot less for a larger mass of it. All right, so there you have it, guys. It was a, a little bit of a failure on the turning. 
but now we know, you know, now you guys hopefully won't try, <laughs> try this out uh, with these super hard crystals uh, and then try and turn them. Just, I don't think it's worth it. There may be some tools out there that, that could get the job done, but definitely not the normal ones. So let's see here. See if we got any questions or anything. Yeah, good color choice, Mel. Where did I get the mold from? Uh, if you're talking about the pendant mold, I got that actually from um, a la mold. Um, here, let me get, I'll get you a link. I'll, um, um, Oksana Bell, uh, she has a YouTube channel as well. Um, she makes these molds. Um, you can also, I'll just say, you can also find them on like Amazon and stuff too. Here's a link to that though. That's where I got it. Um, she's got a bunch of different ones. She's got like bangle molds for like, you know, wrist bangle things. Um, pyramids and spheres and all, all kinds of different types of things uh, that she makes. Um, Uh, I'm waiting for craftsman's imagination. Real quick, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Sticker swap. I don't have any stickers, actually. Um, I, I just put all my stickers on... Uh, what's, what, uh, what the heck is it called? Uh... Uh, teespring for now so i don't actually even have any in on on hand so i apologize for that i was always terrible about stickers <laughs> like people would send them to me and like months later i'd finally get on it so i i do apologize i finally just went with that unfortunately they're super expensive i don't love that setup but at least people can buy one one at a time so let's see is there any other questions up here I don't think so. You guys are talking about stones and all that stuff. So I think that's about it. So uh, if you didn't check it out, the the patron replay, the hangout from uh, January was Coffee Grounds. So make sure to check out that video. You might have to... What I try to do with that, because it's actually kind of a live stream, I try to put it under my live stream uh, playlist, but it doesn't actually go in there for some reason. So um, what you'll have to do is just go to the videos tab and that should be the last video that I posted up there. Um, so if you want to see some coffee grounds being cast and I turned a pen out of it, unfortunately there's no more coffee grounds pen blanks available. Um, those got wiped out like <laughs> right after I sent the email out. Um, but I do plan to make at least like one more batch. I don't have a whole lot of the coffee grounds left but, uh, or the little paper shreds, but I should at least be able to get one more batch, maybe two. So be looking for that. I plan to make some more of those this weekend. Uh, so check, but check out that video if you want to check it out. And I think that's about it. I don't know. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, I don't think so. Let's see here. Cool. So I think that's about it, guys. So we'll be back next week on Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, and we will do some more resin casting. I'm not sure exactly what we have planned. I don't. I don't have a plan yet. So. Uh, be, be checking for Instagram and Facebook. I'll post what we're going to be doing right before, like that day of. Uh, but it should be fun. We'll, we'll have a little bit of fun with resin. And uh, this time, hopefully, we'll get something that's a little bit more turnable <laughs> or, or maybe a, a slightly different project. But, uh, but it was fun. So big thank you to uh, Philip for sending in those uh, crystals. And did, what did I do with the other one? So I still need to get on the, the turnings. Um, I'm way behind on, on turning things, so th it's going to be a little while, but um, we, we use these for, for like a diorama type thing, um, and then we also made a turning blank that, that I probably won't end up cutting into the, the crystals, uh, and it's got a little ba baby dragon in there. So eventually we'll get on these, and th those are projects where, you know, we don't have to worry about cutting into <laughs> the, the actual crystals. It'll be fine. Um, so big thank you to Philip for sending that stuff. And I also have a, a rainbow micarta blank that I, that's on the list. Getting things actually made, turned and all that kind of stuff has been kind of put on the back burner uh, while I'm trying to kind of organize some things in the shop as well as um, get my dust collection um, planned. And I got to clean out space to get the actual new dust collector uh, put up and all that stuff. So 
few things have been put on hold, but I should be getting on some of the projects pretty soon here. So again, thank you guys all for joining the fun tonight, and I hope you have a great evening, great weekend, get in the shop, do some resin casting or some turning or whatever you want to do in the shop. Hopefully you'll get some time to do that. And I will see you guys all on the next live stream Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Have a good night, guys.